All right, this week I want to learn <clears throat> a mimer of the Rebbe. A mimer of the Rebbe. The 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 bar malchut of this week is we learned it last year also. Maybe I'll even put it up. We'll see. It's talking, but it talks in a great deal about the meeting in the United Nations that occurred back then in 1991, 92, I guess, when all the people came together and they decided there wasn't going to be any more. There was Gorbachev and whatever it is, and uh, Reagan, and they decided that there wasn't going to be any more war, no more atomic war and everything like that. <clears throat> okay, but and let's just, so we did that already. And it's it's a little bit difficult to apply that to <clears throat> constantly because you always have to constantly trans translate what was said back then to how it fits into our times, which seem to be exactly the opposite. <clears throat> the whole United Nations is against us, etc. So not to go into the details, even though that is certainly what the Rebbe said is certainly true. What's going on now is certainly not true. But and let's learn this mime. This mimer was the last one given out by the Rebbe to be learned. And shortly after the Rebbe gave this out, the Rebbe suffered a stroke. And that stroke left him um, uh, paralyzed, like half of his body, and unable to speak <clears throat> for about a year and a half. And the Rebbe would come out on the, the, the they would bring the Rebbe out on the uh, this porch, and everybody would say, long live the king, Mashiach for about a year and a half. Now, was it because everybody re realized, and especially because of this mimer, because of this Hasidic discourse, so everybody realized the Rebbe is the Mashiach, the Rebbe is our hope. <clears throat> and the Rebbe is directing us how we can change the world and perfect the world, make a world perfect. So let's go. See, should I make this a little bigger? Does it not, not, not maybe not necessarily maybe bigger necessarily? Oh. The sight of the Shmaya with God's help. Parshas Shabbos Parshas Titzava. Titzava, that's going to be in another what two weeks. <clears throat> this is utter Rishon. It was like in this year that there was two others, right? This is what's called a uh Shanamu Berit. <clears throat> the Shana that a year that has two udders in it. And this is the, the tenth day of the Udder Rishon. The, it was originally said in Tafshin Mem Aleph, 1981. <clears throat> but it was just given over here. The, basically, the Rebbe, after the Rebbe's wife passed away, he didn't say any new Maimorim. No, he gave out old ones that were, <clears throat> he redid them. The, okay. <clears throat> It tells us in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Torah that the Jews got out of Egypt and they built a tabernacle. They built a tabernacle. Almost one year after they got out of Egypt, they received the Torah and they started building the tabernacle. They built the tabernacle and God gives commandments to Moses how to build it, how to build the, the tabernacle, how to build the, 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 the vessels which were in the tabernacle, the altars and etc. The ark, the <clears throat> and he commanded them also to make the garments for the priests and the garments. But before he tells them the thing about the garments, which is Parshish Ketetzave, about the garments, so it comes out with this commandment of bringing olive oil. <clears throat> olive oil. The, the Jewish people, they should bring olive oil to Moses. And for the menorah. That's the commandment. You, so you command the Jewish people that they should bring to you pure olive oil, katit that was pressed for the meor, for the candelabra, from the, the illuminator. Lalot near tamid, that the light should go up. The flame should go up constantly. And the next sentence says, from the evening until the morning, Me'erevat Boker. From the evening, it does, he did, really didn't bring the whole sentence. But that's the rest of the sentence, from evening until the morning. 
<clears throat> that's a sentence. So we can see, first of all, in the end, there's a little bit of a question that says that the, the, the flame should go up constantly. And then it says from evening until the morning. So that's not exactly constantly. Okay. <clears throat> that's one question. Another question is going to be, <clears throat> why does it say you command the Jewish people? Why does it just say, command the Jewish people? What does it mean you have to command the Jewish people? But God is commanding. Moses gives all the commandments in the Torah. And God is, why all of a sudden God says over here, you command the Jewish people, as though God is not commanding them? Another question. Another question is, why does God say that the Jewish people should, you should, Moses should tell the Jewish people to bring the oil to him, to Moses? Ari, Aaron was the one that lit the candles. Aaron was the high priest, not Moses. Why do they have to bring to Moses? So we'll see. We'll see these questions. The Rebbe is going to ask the questions and they're going to answer. The point of this mimer is going to be <clears throat> to stress to us and to explain to us what is the function of Moses? What is a true Jewish leader supposed to do? What's a true leader supposed to do? What is the purpose of Moses? Why is there a necessity for Moses? What's the unique purpose of Moses? And why there has to be a Moses in every generation? There always has to be a Moses. If there's not, there's no Jewish people. The Jewish people just <coughs> dissolve, scatter around, get confused run around like sheep without a shepherd. <clears throat> there has to be a Moses. Why? What is Moses? What does Moses do? <clears throat> what is a Jew? Why, why is it so necessary there should be Jews at all? Why should there be Jews? What's, this, what's the, so unique about the Jewish people and the Jewish people? What's so special? There's all these other nations and all these other, they don't have any special, you know, high holy people that Spread the demand, everybody bring me oil, bring me olive oil. What's going on here? So let's see. <clears throat> the Yudua Diukim, it's known some of the details in this. <clears throat> Diukim, the word Diuk means implications. Implications from some of these words or the seemingly extra words or seemingly improper grammar that's used over here seem it's implying something what are the implications over here the bakal first of all let's begin from the beginning in all the commandments of the torah it says tzav has been israel god tells moses command the jews speak to the jews tell the jews all of a sudden over here it says ata that you moses command the jews well oh, see the moses is commanding the jews why does it say you Moses, command the Jews. Just say, command the Jews. Tzavis ben you. Here it says that you, Moses, you have to command the Jews. Was, Moses somehow or other is special. He's going to do something that God can't do. You command the Jews. Well, I'll see if and to add on, shadiuk, mashikatu, that what it says, you command the Jews is lorak balashan. <clears throat> the, 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 <clears throat> the implication is not just in the language you, but also in the content. The, you command the Jews, it seems to imply that Moses, he is the one that's commanding, not God. So 11, Moses, he's not a, he doesn't command anything. Moses is just an emissary. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Moses is just a speaks, spokesman. He gives over to the Jewish people the commandments of God. Loma Neymar, why does it say, you, Moses, you command? Can I move this somewhere? Maybe I can move this thing one second. Huh? Oh, 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 look at this. Look at this. Okay, wow. Okay, all right. Why does it say, you, Moses? You know what? Let's, maybe I can do this here. Watch this. Oh, that's good. Why does it say, you, <clears throat> you command the Jewish people? Okay, and even more, that what it says, it's not just in the language, but also in the part. Usually, God commands. Here it's implying that Moses commands. But Sir Lavin, we have to understand, Harry, behold, Moses, who's a shliach. Moses is just a emissary. 
And I did away with, oh, here we go. Yeah, I came back. Okay. I get it, I get it. Moses is just an emissary. Moses is an emissary to give over the word of God. Lama Neymar, why does it say, Moses, you're not an emissary here. Here, you're the commander. <clears throat> why? Gam, also, it's surah Lavin. We have to understand what it says. Why does it Moses, com Moses command the Jewish people that they, that they should bring to him? Tell the Jewish people they should bring to you. She Hashem and that Yavu Hashem and that they should bring the oil, this pure oil, to Moses. The oil again is for the candelabra, right? To light the, the, the menorah. Why bring it to Moses? Lechiora, since the re lift lighting of the menorah is by means of our own. Lama Hutzrich, why was it necessary to bring the oil to Moses? Kam and we also have to understand what it says. Shemen Katit Lemeor. It says they should bring for you oil that was crushed up for the menorah from the source of light. It doesn't say light, oil for burning or oil to make light. It says oil for the candelabra, the meor. The or it should say shemen, le'ir, oil. You have to bring oil to make light. You're not bringing oil for the candles. You're bringing oil for the light, or oil for the lamp. Oh, that's it. Don't say oil for the lamp. It's not oil for the lamp. A menorah is the me, me, the me or is the lamp. Don't say oil for the lamp, but oil to make oil, light. <clears throat> that's why, look, also, it's sort of love, we have to understand that a puzzle in the sentence which after this, it says, me'eravad boker. It says that the light, the candles should make light. The lamps should make light in the holy temple from the evening until the morning. And here it says that they should, the, 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 the light should go up constantly. <clears throat> so we have many questions. First of all, why does God say you, Moses, command? Why does it say that they should bring the oil to Moses? Aaron was the one who lit the lamp. Why does it say that it should be crushed up for the lamp? Why doesn't it say it should be crushed up for light? And why does it say that it should be raising up the, the, the fire constantly when in fact it wasn't constant, it was from the evening to the morning. That was what the next sentence says. <clears throat> um, explains the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. He explains in a mimer that he said on the same topic, Kibla Yehudim, a mimer that he said for <coughs> for um, Purim, that it was said on the year Purim, Katan, it was also said on Purim, Katan, that was also in that year, Tafresh Pei Zion. Tafresh Pei Zion was 1927. That was the year that the Rebbe, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, got freed from prison. He got put into prison also, but he also got freed from prison. <clears throat> Tafresh Pei Zion. This is before he got put into prison, but he got <clears throat> Tafresh Pei Zion. So he said that the, the, the previous Lubavitcher Rabbi, Rabbi Yosef Yitzhak, he also explained the same topic. <clears throat> what he explained, he said, Ata tetzave, said, Moses, you command the word tetzave also means to connect. Tzavta bechibor. The job of you, Moses, is to connect the Jewish people, like we're learning in, in Torah or. Moses is not a regular person like everybody else, a talented person, a, a very gifted, <clears throat> the, the natural leader, or a tremendously spiritual person, a tremendously spiritual person with the ability to explain deep spiritual ideas to everyone or a charismatic person. In fact, when the Torah praises Moses, it says Moses was the most humble person in the world. <clears throat> humility. <clears throat> what is humility? Humility means that you're humble before someone else. You're not interested so much in your own talents and your own qualities and your own <clears throat> abilities and successes. Humility means that you're connected to someone else. You're humble before someone else. 
Moses taught humility to the Jewish people, connected them to God. There was no one, when Moses was there, there was no such thing as God says this, but I say this. Right? Or maybe you could say, I say this, but God says this. I'll do what God wants. And he connected the Jews to God. They say, oh, that's what it means. I thought that's about you command the Jewish people. So Moses, he didn't command, he connected. He made God real to the Jewish people. He connected God, the Jewish people to Orin Sof. Orin Sof was not just a Kabbalistic idea. Suddenly everybody felt, God is my commander. All your day, by means of that Moses, my spiel, Israel, and Moses, by means of him, <clears throat> influencing the Jewish people, namely what? The, attaching them to Or and Sof, attaching them to the infinite light of God, all the Jews, all you they said by means of this, Nase Yitron, there was an addition also to Moses. Moshe also got an increase. The Moshe and the Jewish people are like a head and a foot. Like it says, 600,000 are the feet of the people that I am among them, said Moses. What does it mean, 600,000 feet? I mean, if you're going to be I mean, exactly how many feet there were, there was twice as many, right? There were 600,000 men. Each one had two feet. <laughs> so it should be 1,200,000. Why 600,000? It should be 1,200,000. It says, no, regularly the Jewish people are called the feet. And Moses is called the head of the Jewish people. The call Yisrael, the Jewish people, they are the feet of Moses. And Moses is the head, but it's one body. Just like the person, his feet <clears throat> lift up and they move the head to a place where the head on its own cannot go. And similarly, is Moses and the Jewish people. that By means of the Jewish people, that they are the feet of Moses, that they are they add on, by means of the Jewish people, they add some sort of an elevation to Moses. That's what it says, that's what it says, 600,000 are the feet of the people that I am among them. That by means of the feet of the people, namely that the people, by the humility and the surrender of the people to Hashem, to God, is nimshach, that is revealed that Anochi, of the essence of God, Bikirbo, inside of Moses. <clears throat> okay, now there's only one creator, and the creator creates everybody. And the creator creates everybody from love. And the only people that know this, potentially, are the Jews. And the only one that knows this actually is Moses. And the job of Moses is to attach the Jewish people to his awareness of God. That's what we learned in Torah or, right? The, the, the seed of animal, the seed of man. <coughs> That's what it means. Israel, you command the Jewish people. They should take to you this oil. That by means of Moses, that Moses commands and attaches the Jewish people with or and so by means of this, the Jewish people bring this pure oil to Moses. When Moshe connects the Jews to God, then the Jews elevate Moshe. The Jews bring their oil to Moses. We're going to see what this oil is in a moment. Yichuilecha. She has seen that they add an extra or an extra light to Moses, to Moshe. <clears throat> so the, the essence of man is free choice. God makes everybody that they have free choice, people can choose whatever they want to, but people have to have what to choose from. They have to know what they are. Right? If a person is hypnotized, whatever, that he thinks that he's a, a chicken, then he has a free choice. Either he can eat corn, or he can eat little grains of bread that are crumbs. That's his choice. He doesn't know what other choices there are. right? Uh, a bigger chicken comes along and pecks him, he can run away, he can fight back. That's his whole life. As soon as the chicken realizes that he's not a chicken, he's a human being. So then his whole choices become totally different. <clears throat> the same thing is the Jewish people. As long as the Jewish people think, or let's say take the world, as long as the world thinks that they're just like animals, like Freud and all these other people think, that we're just a bunch of animals, they're just intelligent animals. 
So our choices are only animal choices. But as soon as the whole world realizes that there's a God that creates us, and that God is a, a higher level of reality and consciousness, if you want to call it, an awareness of the importance of the physical world than what we have now, then we're not interested in corn and grains anymore. We're not interested in money and things like that. Good, I mean, if, if, if corn and grains are not bad, neither is money. But there's something much more real. <clears throat> so everything has a, a bigger meaning to it. The Jewish people, they have the job. We are responsible for the whole world, that the whole world should open up their mind to the creator and how important each person is in the creator's eyes. <clears throat> and Moses, he's the one that he's supposed to be awakening the Jews. He has to constantly awaken them to what God is and to remind them of their responsibility to the world to tell them. <clears throat> Good, but who's inspiring Moses? It says the Jews inspire Moses. When 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 the Jew, when Moses inspires the Jews to what they do to what they're supposed to, then that gives Moses an inspiration that he can inspire them also to higher levels. That adds a higher level to Moses. Let's see what this is. So now the Rebbe is trying to explain that dynamics of reality are not what we think. The dynamics of reality are not just you know this world and the next world. That's it. There's the heavens and there's the earth. Is the earth the main thing or is the heavens the main thing? Right? Religious people believe that heaven is the main thing. Non-religious people believe that the earth is the main thing. Says the Rebbe, the Rebbe wants to say that both are the main thing. But we have to unite them both. We have to show the true importance of this physical world. That only the Jews can do. And they can only do it through Moses. And, and it, it depends. When they listen to Moses, that brings oil to Moses that he can live, elevate them to a higher level. <clears throat> but that's what life is supposed to be about. Revealing the creator in the creation. <clears throat> and that only Moses can do. We'll see. That's what it means. Moses, you're the one that has the tetzava that attaches. You're Moses, you are the one that attaches. God creates one person in every generation that he can attach all of the whole entire world, Jews first, to the creator and show the importance of this creation. <clears throat> Let's explain. That's Judaism. Let's explain this. <clears throat> we can begin in the mimer that Moses was called Raya Mehemna. Moses was called the faithful shepherd. said, There's two meanings in this. That he is a faithful shepherd of the Jewish people. You can depend on him. Number one. Or the other one is that he is he shepherds faith. That he either he leads the Jewish people, he's a good leader, or it can be, in other words, he's a faithful leader, or it can mean that he's a leader of faith. He, he's a shepherd of faith. He feeds the Jewish people faith. A shepherd feeds the, the, his, his sheep grass. Moses feeds the Jewish people faith. And not only that, he feeds the faith itself. He strengthens the faith of the Jewish people. So there's not just a thing that's above understanding. <clears throat> he makes it healthy so you feel it. Okay, here we go. The faith the Jewish people have on, the, on their own, the Jewish people, they believe in God. Every Jew believes in God. They are believers, the sons of believers. I'm sure it could be that it will be in a surrounding way. Like we said before, a thief, before he goes to steal, he prays to God for success. He believes in God, but it doesn't affect him in a personal way. The whole idea of Moses, that he, he feeds the Jewish people faith, means that he strengthens the faith of the Jewish people, Ben Yenamuna, who emuna tiyeba penimius, namely that the faith of the Jewish people, that they believe in God, it should be, they should be fed, it should go inside of them. That's what it also says in the Zohar, hahu emuna de la'ela, this faith that the Jewish people have, the connection of God to God that all the Jewish people have, but it's in a surrounding way. <clears throat> the Jewish people will be fed and nourished by it by means of you, by means of Moses. <clears throat> Moses, that that Moses feeds and Mafarnas is Amuna, the faith who Shamam Shechotobapinimius, he draws it into an innerness. <clears throat> In an inner. So that's the idea 
of Moses. Moses makes, <clears throat> every Jew believes in God. It's a very amazing thing. Every Jew believes in God. How do you see every Jew believes in God? There's big, super, super atheists in the Jewish people. Super terrible atheists there are in the Jewish people. The, 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 they say the worst, the most, uh, uh, the, the most, the cruelest and the most wicked gangs and the mafias were the Jews, the Jews, the purple gang in Detroit, the worst. The, the Jews, the worst of the communists, the ones that put the previous Rebbe into prison, they were Jews, right? You want to tell me those people also believe in God? He says, yeah, you want to see how they believe in God? I'll, I'll show you one second. <clears throat> and, um, uh, call me in another half an hour. I'm in the middle of a class, okay? Half an hour. <clears throat> the, the idea is, is to draw this faith that every Jew, oh, how, how can you see that every Jew, go to one of these people, the, these criminals and the purple gang and the, the, the communists, whatever, the, the, and tell them <clears throat> God doesn't exist. God exists. There's such a thing as God. Oh, they'll get excited. It does, does not exist. What are you talking about? You're a liar. Da, da, da. Go to the same criminal, non-Jew, and tell them God exists. They'll say, okay, believe what you want. What do I want? <clears throat> In other words, every Jew inside of him is burning a fire that God exists. And he has to fight against this. He has to prove it's not so. <clears throat> and that that Moses feeds the Jewish people, that's what he means, that he takes this faith, which is inside of every Jew, but in, in a very very dim way, and he increases it. Like I told you, I told you the story so many times, but I'll tell it again. That I met a fellow that he worked in America, and he he had a, some sort of a business. I think there was a a, 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 a garage or something. In any case, he he worked, this, and he had a partner, an Israeli. They were both Israelis. His partner was a Yemenite. A Yemenite, totally anti-religion, totally anti-everything, did absolutely nothing connected to Judaism, not eating kosher, not, nothing whatsoever. And he had long hair, he had this long bushy hair, and he had all these piercings and everything like that. <clears throat> and he was a fun-loving guy, you know, this, a young guy. Anyway, somehow or other, he convinced this Yemenite guy to go with him to, to the Rebbe to re get dollars. The Rebbe used to give out dollars on Sunday. Lubavitcher Rebbe gave out dollars on Sunday. <clears throat> he refused a lot of times, but one day was against the one. There was one Sunday when they were had nothing to do. Whatever happened, he convinced them. So they went in front of the Rebbe, and he got a dollar. What's the big deal? They would go by the Rebbe, and the Rebbe would give a dollar and say, "Bracha v'hatzlacha." You should have blessing and success. That's it. And people would go by the Rebbe. They would they, they would say that when I went by the Rebbe, I felt that the Rebbe was just waiting for me. Okay, some people said, some people didn't. He went by the Rebbe, this guy, and he was like an avowed, super duper, ultra orthodox atheist. He was absolutely nothing to do with Judaism, with religion, with God, nothing whatsoever. He was having a good time. There was a, he went by the Rebbe, got the dollar from the Rebbe. He went out. His friend wanted to talk to him. His friend was behind him. He went out, immediately went across the street, <clears throat> went to a barber shop. Got his hair cut off, all of his hair cut off, took off all of his rings, went next door, bought a pair of tefillin, and said, That's it, I'm a religious Jew. They said, What happened to you? What happened? The Rebbe said, I said, I don't know what happened. He said, I don't know what happened. Just I just suddenly felt I'm a Jew. I gotta act like a Jew. That's what it means. Waking up, the faith was there inside, but to bring it out, okay, that's an exaggerated case. That's a really exaggerated case. But nevertheless, in the in the the, the various degrees that happens to everybody. And sometimes it doesn't happen immediately. Sometimes it happens after a year, 10 years, whatever. That's the job of Moses is to feed faith and feed the faith of every Jew. Raya Mahemna. Umam Sheikh Bamaimer continues that that Moses was a Raya Mahemna, that he was the faithful shepherd. The intention is this, is also not just to Moses, but the representative of Moses in every generation. The Rosh Alpha Yisrael, that the heads of the Jewish people in every center generation, they are the ones that hold the faith of the Jewish people in their generation. We see as soon as Moses, the Jewish people thought Moses wasn't going to come down, down from Mount Sinai, as they worshiped the golden calf. They heard God say, don't worship the golden calf. 
40 days before they heard God say it. They saw God, they felt God, their souls jumped out of their bodies. But when Moses wasn't there, that's it. It went, their faith went to sleep. Shamuna Shalahem, and it should be panemius, it should be active inside of them. Like Mordechai. For instance, Mordechai in the holiday of Purim. Mordechai, he was the he was the representative of Moses in his generation. Like it says, Mordechai in his generation was like Moses in his, in his generation. Shekam is man gazirus Haman, even in the time of the decree of Haman. Shalim with the Torah, that learning Torah and doing the commandments then was very, very difficult. In fact, doing Torah and the commandments was a matter of self-sacrifice. We'll talk about this next time. Nevertheless, Mordechai, he killed he gathered together as his children and people in, in public and taught them Torah to strengthen the faith of the Jewish people and God, and stand strongly in learning Torah and doing the commandments. The Jewish people could say, okay, listen, I'll be a Jew. Leave me alone. What do I have to learn the Torah for? It's just going to make trouble for us. And Mordechai said, Torah, that's Judaism. Commandments, that's Judaism. You have this feeling inside of yourself that you're a Jew, and you'll never leave this feeling. You'll fight for this feeling that you're a Jew. Well, you should fight the same way for Torah and the commandments. <clears throat> and everybody said, nah, that's a little bit too much. Mordechai said, it's not too much, and everybody accepted it. Well, the and after it is that the previous Rebbe explains that Moses and his representative in every generation, they are the ones that strengthen the Jewish people's faith. Faith. He explains that that what it says that Shem and Katit Lamor, that that which oil is brought, pure oil is crushed for the lamp, for the lamp, not for the fire. In the, this is in the time of exile. This is referring to the Jewish people that each one is broken and crushed. Just like the olives, katit. By means of this, the Jewish people are crushed in the time of exile. Al Yudai said, by means of this, Megim, we reach Lamaor. We reach to the source of light. Shemimenu nimsa or that from it comes light. That's what the previous Rebbe says in his mind. But Surah Lahavan, we have to understand what is the connection of what it says. <clears throat> that what it says that the Jewish people when they're crushed they bring this oil to what it says before that Moses he strengthens the faith of the Jewish people that on one hand it says that Moses he increases the faith of the Jewish people and on the other hand it says no that's, that's not the main thing the main thing is when the Jewish people are crushed that's what brings out their essence not Moses educating them and inspiring them. When the Jews are crushed, that's what brings out their essence. What brings out the essence of the Jewish people? When the Jewish people are crushed in exile, or when Moses educates them? And it seems both. It seems that, first of all, Moses educates them first, and then they have self-sacrifice. Let's understand this, God willing, tomorrow. But just in a short way, in, in the time of Purim, according to Chabad, Chabad explains it a little bit differently than everybody else really very, very differently than everybody else. Chabad explains that Haman made a decree to kill all the Jews. The decree was to kill all the Jews in one day. <clears throat> and the Jews realized that they could get out of it. All they had to do was just say they're not Jews. There was no, he didn't require any sort of proof that you're a Jew or not. The command was to kill all the Jews. All the Jew has to do was like take the mezuzah off of his door. Maybe not even that. <clears throat> you could say it's a good luck piece. Just say, oh, I'm not Jewish. That's all. Three words, I'm not Jewish. Any Jew would say, I am not Jewish. There wouldn't be any decree. Haman wouldn't kill them. Nevertheless, Mordechai inspired the Jews that Judaism is so important that there was not one Jew that even thought to say, I'm not a Jew. That's self-sacrifice. It was so easy for them to avoid danger and death just by saying, I'm not Jewish. And nevertheless, no Jew did. It was so important. Mordechai made it so important and vital to every Jew. We're talking about Jews with low IQs, not so religious Jews, children, every single Jew, suddenly Judaism became so important 
that they didn't look at the danger. Nobody wants to die. But Judaism became so important to them that to leave it, it didn't enter their mind. No one wanted, no one wanted to die. But to leave Judaism, no, couldn't. Even to, just to say three words, to leave Judaism just for a couple of instants, right? An instant, just say, I'm not Jewish. Three words. No, nope, nobody did it. That's how Mordechai made everybody crazy for Judaism. Everyone. <clears throat> As we're going to talk about more God willing tomorrow. Yeah, I like this.